During the United States war against Japan, the US forces often enjoyed a technical advantage in terms of equipment and weapons. US flamethrowers and submachine guns, not to mention tanks and air power, gave the US an edge. However, one Japanese weapon that was particularly feared by the US Marines was the knee mortar. This light mortar was easy to use and transport and had a high rate of fire. It is believed that this weapon caused 40% of American casualties in the Pacific. Its most used name, the knee mortar, is actually incorrect. Actually known as the Type 89 Grenade Discharger, US troops nicknamed it the knee mortar as for a time it was thought that the weapon was fired by stabilizing it against the user's leg. Although this probably could have been done in an emergency, this was not how the weapon was used. Throughout the war, when it came to weapon production, the Imperial Japanese Army's requirements often came in second to the needs of the Imperial Japanese Navy. The Army was an infantry-heavy organization that lagged much in the way of modern heavy weaponry that other armies enjoyed. Their anti-tank capabilities were extremely limited, artillery was often lacking, and sometimes restricted to small, outmoded pieces. To help compensate for the lack of heavy weapons, the Imperial Japanese Army worked hard to develop large numbers of what were probably the best light infantrymen in the world at that time. Their creed stressed relentless offensive action, seeking a quick decision and emphasizing spiritual factors including zealous dedication and fighting spirit. Night attacks were a true specialty and their weaponry reflected their light and fast doctrine. To offset their frequent lack of artillery, the Japanese augmented their firepower through the extensive use of mortars, the best and the most cost-effective substitute for industry-intensive heavier artillery. And few were as feared or as effective as the Type 89. After studying employment of grenades and mortars on the battlefield, the Japanese army developed hand grenades, rifle grenades and mortar shell dischargers suited to warfare in typical short-range combat environments such as urban, trench and jungle warfare. The Type 89 was adopted in 1929, but production did not begin until 1932. Although the Type, 20, type 89 could be fired by a single person, it was typically operated with a crew of three, enabling it to reach a rate of fire of about 25 rounds per minute. By setting the Type 89 at a fixed angle of 45 degrees and varying distance to target by adjusting the size of a variable chamber space inside the discharger mechanism, soldiers could adjust fire onto multiple targets at varying range while firing the 50mm shell through a single small clearing in the jungle canopy. The method worked equally well when firing from deep trenches or when fighting inside a town or city. The army issued three Type 89s per platoon, making it their most widely used infantry fire support weapon. During World War II, the weapon was used effectively against the Allied defenders in the Battle of Corregidor in May of 1942. It also saw service in Burma 
and the Pacific Islands. The Japanese Navy paratroopers carried special containers for the Type 89 clipped to their harnesses to provide fire support right on the landing zone. Allied troops quickly learned to take cover when they heard the weapons pop when launching its grenades or shells, in some cases from more than 180 meters away. After World War II, the Type 89 was used by the Indonesian National Army against Dutch forces. Others were used by communist forces during the Chinese Civil War and some were also used by the Viet Cong during the Vietnam War. I hope you enjoyed this episode and to make sure you don't miss my future work, please make sure you are subscribed to my channel and press the bell notification button. Thank you and see you in the next video.